Hi, everyone. We're going to get started here shortly. Just waiting for everyone to join in. Once we start, we don't like to pause too much when people are get, trying to be admitted. So that's why we usually start a little late. Good morning, Luann. Everyone's Good morning. <laughs> Okay, most of you guys know the drill. If you could just keep yourselves on mute for the lecture portion of the class so we don't have um, too much background noise, that would be great. And then we're gonna go ahead and get started. One second. Okay, perfect. All right, good morning. I'm glad to see so many of you. We were a little nervous with daylight savings <laughs> and people might uh, get the times wrong, but you guys, you guys got it. <laughs> Um, so today we are here. One second. Today we're here with Clear Choice and with Vicky. We're going to learn all about the Clear Choice chemical peels and then do a demo at the end of the class. Uh, we do have a coupon code for all of our class attendees. It's just CLEAR in all capitals, and that's 10% off the entire Clear Choice line, and that lasts until Friday. So I think most of you know us, but just in case anyone here is new, my name's Kelly Anderson, and this is Julia Anderson, mm -hmm. um, and we own California Skincare Supply. Of course, we are a wholesale distribution company um, that services licensed estheticians. We are the distributor for all of the Dermastart brands, um, and we're so excited to learn all about uh, Clear Choice's amazing advanced chemical peels today. Um, when you have a moment, if you haven't investigated our website, it's a great place to get started. We have a wonderful rewards program set up there for you. You can earn rewards um, a ton of different ways, obviously by placing orders, but also just by giving reviews, tips, um, asking or answering questions. That all lives in a red box on the bottom of every page. You can click on it anytime and it'll tell you how many points you have if you have earned um, loyalty coupons and you can just write reviews right from there as well. Um, we also have a lot of recorded classes, um, demonstrations, so you can watch those under the tab education. And then all of our classes, um, we teach classes almost every Monday through Zoom that also lives on um, under the tab education. Um, so Without further ado, we're super happy to have Vicki Panos here today. She is the educator for Dermastart, and she is a wonderful educator, and we're so happy to have her. Take it away, Vicky. Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, good morning to those of you on the West Coast. <laughs> For us here on the East Coast, it's the afternoon. Um, today, we're going to be talking about as uh, Julia and Kelly were just talking about our peel systems. Um, and then after the uh, presentation that we're going to go through, we are going to walk through the uh, kits that you all received. And um, Kelly and Julia will be going through a demonstration uh, with the peel systems and we'll be walking through that. In addition to the peel system four, we're also going to be reviewing and talking about the enhancers and boosters that allow you to personalize all of your treatments uh, for your clients and allows you to um, perform uh, chemical peels, uh, treatments and facials for your clients uh, that are different each and every time. Uh, to address whatever issue they have at their during their appointment at that moment. So I'm really excited to share all this information for you with you. And I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, and start the presentation. Um, so for those of you that are, don't know or aren't familiar with Clear Choice, it is a medically inspired line. So um, sold a lot and popular in med spas and with doctor's offices. Um, it's a line that offers a full array of products, including cleansers and moisturizers, uh, uh, sunscreens, all of that stuff. So whatever it is that you need to complete an entire facial treatment can be found with the Clear Choice brand. 
Um, one thing that we're really proud of is the fact that we are fennel free. Um, it's a uh, mild acidic toxic that is um, used a lot in a lot of different peel systems and products. It is obtained or extracted from tar and it's used a lot in chemical manufacturing. Um, it's obviously diluted and often used as a word called carbolic in your uh, ingredients list. So you can rest assured that that is not in our products because it is corrosive to the eyes and the skin and obviously the respiratory tract as well. So if you have clients who do their research and they're wondering if you're using products with that ingredient in it, you can safely say no. Um, one of the things that's really important and we're gonna talk about when we discuss each of the acids that we go through in the systems is the concentration or the percentage of each peel and versus the pH level. So um, I don't know if any of you guys have had this happen to you before where you have a, you know, you have a client come in and they say to you, you know, I bought XYZ chemical peel or acid um, from a local pharmacy and it is, you know, a 25% percentage. So how come you're only using 25%, you know, in your, in your, in your clinic? And what they don't understand is that when we talk about acids, it's not just about the percentage or the intensity of the peel. We're also talking about the pH level because the pH level dictates how acidic the peel is. So you can have, you know, a 50% glycolic peel, but if they're at a pH level of seven, which is neutral, we know that's not going to last at all on the skin and not do a lot for it. And what we've included in the um, PowerPoint, which I know you all have got a copy of, is a pH value. So you can kind of see where everything lies in terms of the um, acidic value of products that we're using. So you can see, for example, vinegar is at a 2.9 you know, lemon juice 2.4, battery acid is like at a 0.5. So a lot of our peels are within the, you know, um, 0.7 to 1.9 uh, section. And some of them go as high as, but not higher than um, a 2.9. And that's more of like an enzymatic. So in order for a chemical peel to be effective, we're not just looking at, I guess my point is we're not just looking at a percentage or intensity. We are looking at the pH levels of those peels. The other thing that a lot of um, companies don't talk about and I think is really important when you're uh, training and educating is that we really need to look at the Fitzpatrick scale when we're treating our clients and we need to make sure that we're using chemical peels that's good for their skin. Obviously, um, a Fitzpatrick one is gonna be very different from a Fitzpatrick six. We know what that, you know, what the differences are, white, white skin, light hair, light eyes, um, burns easily. Uh, with direct sun exposure versus a Fitzpatrick six at the extreme other side of the scale, you know, darker skin, darker eyes, um, doesn't burn or burns, you know, mildly, that kind of stuff. And that all has to do with what acid we use too. So it, with every product that you purchase, and we've got a little cheat sheet for you too coming up, um, you'll be able to figure out what products are best suited for different skin types. And when I say type, I'm talking about the Fitzpatrick scale. Um, we know that someone who has more melanin in their system, maybe, or in their skin might have a um, stronger reaction to either a uh, uh, hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation if the molecular structure of that 
um, chemical is small enough to reach deeper into the tissue. And that's essentially the, the challenge that we have with chemical peels and Fitzpatrick types. When we prepare the skin for our chemical peeling, um, we are really looking at making the skin, preparing it, making it ready to receive the treatment that we're giving them. Um, so in a nutshell, how we have worded it or summarized it here is conditioning is, um, the skin is the process of lifting the skin to its highest state before an aggressive professional peel. And that's mandatory. We want to make sure the skin is, you know, healthy and clean and prepared to receive um, an aggressive chemical peel so that it can react and have the best results. Um, it reduces the risk of negative reactions, um, such as that hyper or hypopigmentation and uneven uh, penetration of the peel solution. So if I've, you know, made sure the skin is healthy and exfoliated, I won't be having you know, the peel penetrating more in an area where the skin has been exfoliated or there's not as much dead skin buildup as opposed to an area where there is more skin buildup and the desquamation process hasn't happened properly. Um, preparing it also helps increase the penetration and the depth of the peeling agent. It helps to promote healing because the skin is healthy and obviously we're gonna get the best optim uh, the optimal results for that treatment. How do we prepare or condition the skin? We do an in-office peel. We, um, the slow introduction of a lower strength. So I might have my clients come in a week before to have a peel prep treatment. Um, that would entail something that is a deep cleansing and ex a good exfoliation, maybe a lower grade peel, maybe something enzymatic, something that is self-neutralizing that I might um, use as an introductory treatment for that client. Um, that will help for the skin to regenerate safely and um, health, more healthy skin will come up and I'll be able to treat it, treat it better. At home, they can use some Retin-A's and some AHA's if you want to sell them um, something that does have like a retinol. We have a good Retinox treatment they can use at home to help decrease that negative result and post-inflammation hyperpigmentation. They can use that for probably two to four weeks before they come in for their more aggressive treatment for you uh, or with you, and we'll have them um, we'll have them stop that retinol or TCA night cream, whatever it is that you're, they're using, a good five to seven days before they come in for their uh, aggressive treatment. One of the things that I have people ask me a lot is, oh, I want a HA, I want a glycolic, or you know, what's the difference between an AHA and a glycolic? A lot of times we're not um, in tune with the fact that an AHA or an alpha hydroxy acid refers to all fruit acids that are water soluble. And examples of AHAs are all of these acids that we have listed. So all of these acids, glycolic, lactic, malic, mandelic, citric, and tartaric are AHAs. So when you say I'll have either an AHA or a glycolic, it's the same thing. BHAs on the other hand, we have essentially only one and that is the um, salicylic acid. In the past, we used to, this salicylic acid was derived from aspirin or was in the same family as aspirin. These days, we derive it from winter birch, winter green, or a birch tree. So you don't really have to worry as much with contraindications to aspirin. I just sort of, if someone is allergic to aspirin, I proceed with caution. So a beta hydroxy acid is made. Um, to exfoliate without inflammation. And we don't have to use a glycolic for it. It's also oil soluble, which makes it great for the buildup of sebum. Um, so you can imagine this works really well because of its anti-inflammatory properties and the fact that it's oil soluble works really great on someone who's acne prone, comedone prone. It's my go-to for all of those clients.
So moving on to the acids that we have available, we have our lactic acid, acid which is a humectant. It has a natural moisturizing factor um, of the stratum corneum, which is the top layer of your epidermis. And this treatment is easy to tolerate because of its high molecular weight. When we talk about molecules, obviously the higher molecular weight um, it is because it's large, it has, it doesn't penetrate as quickly, it moves more slowly, so it's easy to tolerate for that reason. Um, we have in our line both a 10% lactic enzyme gel and we have a 70% cryo. So this will be something that you can work with clients that maybe um, have a first time peel, maybe are hypersensitive. It's just a lot easier to tolerate. Usually no downtime with this, depending on the skin, um, on the strength and the skin type, of course. Our lactic enzyme gel um, has a higher pH level. And this is what I was talking about earlier when we look at and pH levels of uh, versus intensities in our, in our acids. Because it is a low percentage and a high pH level, it's not very active. So it comes in a gel form, and that means that it's going to be about as active as it's going to get for as long as it stays moist and it will dissipate, which is why I love using this um, lactic enzyme gel as a precursor to almost all of my treatments and as a post treatment to a lot of my microdermabrasion treatments and that kind of thing, because it will help to slough off any dead skin post-treatment too. This can be used with or without steam. And as I mentioned earlier, because it is an enzyme, sorry, my battery for some reason is running low and it's plugged in. So I don't know why that is. Give me one sec. Let me just turn this on. Sorry, guys. I had this plugged in last night, so I'm not sure. Okay. Um, this is one of uh, this is one of those things where I mentioned as long as it stays wet, it will stay active, which is why we can use this gel, this enzyme gel under steam. And I use it a lot of in my acne treatments for that reason. Um, I'll keep those little Pac-Mans going that are eating up those little enzymes that are eating up all of my dead skin for as long as possible. So it makes my extractions a lot easier, but also it will also prep the skin um, before I do an actual uh, more aggressive chemical peel and it'll help me give my client an even treatment because uh, it will get rid of all the dead skin. So when this is used in conjunction with another peel, we make sure that we use it as a degreaser and as an exfoliant without a mechanical sort of manual um, scrubbing treatment because it won't aggravate the skin in preparation to our chemical peel. And it's completely safe to use for all skin types and all Fitzpatrick's. Our 70% cryoprotective lactic acid. Um, this is non-irritating. This is a rapid exfoliator. It has the added benefit um, of a extract, a fermented extract that I cannot pronounce. And it is a glyprotein from an ant Antarctic sea, which improves and enhances hydration. I love this peel because it's good for all skin types, all Fitzpatrick's. I can use it on anyone and then boost it or enhance it and personalize it with one of my boosters. So it's a safe one, it's easy to use, and it's a great introductory chemical peel for clients. My glycolic has a smaller molecular, molecular size. It actually helps to loosen the glue-like substance. Those desmosomes that are holding together the skin, the dead skin, all at the top layers of my epidermal um, section, it allows for a greater exfoliation and ease of penetration. It's great for hyperpigmentation. It's great for acne, fine lines, and wrinkles. We have it in both a green tea glycolic, 
One of the things too that'll come up is we have a 35% glycolic suspended in green tea, which makes um, the it easy to use on, we call it, we've nicknamed it our rosacea peel because it's safe to use on people with hyper um, hypersensitive skin. And then we have, of course, the 50% glycolic as well. And this is it coming up here. Um, this is a peel that will actually accelerate the healing process um, and keep the inflammation down when we're talking about someone who has hyper hypersensitive skin. It helps to reduce the appearance of fine lines that we talked about. It helps to lighten and brighten. It helps to soothe the outer layers or the texture of the skin. Um, great for all skin types, great for all Fitzpatrick's, great for grade one acne, um, rosacea, aging, and sensitive skin. Definitely my go-to when someone comes to me with redness or inflammation in their skin, but still needs the exfoliation that they can't get anywhere else. Our glycolic 50% has a pH level of 1.7. It directly influences our epidermal keratinization. Um, this is really good for mild acne scarring, uneven skin tone, fine lines and wrinkles. And it's used um, Fitzpatrick's one to three. I would not use this as a first time out peel for Fitzpatrick's five and six because it can have an uneven reaction on the skin and cause, and it'll be more prone to hyper or hypopigmentation. You want to ease people into this peel if they're not used to it. And if they have skin, that's a darker, like a Fitzpatrick five, six. Mandelic, another one of my favorites, um, completely safe to use and it's self-neutralizing, which I love. Um, so it will dissipate on its own. This is derived from bitter almonds. And I want to really talk about here the fact that because it's derived from almonds does not mean that you can't use it on someone who has an allergic reaction to nuts. I would still do a patch test if I'm really worried, but um, it's actually derived from the seedling before it even turns into a nut. So I wouldn't. I would, I would throw caution to the air. I mean, I would still do the whole uh, patch test, but don't eliminate it from your options because it is such a great uh, chemical peel to provide for your clients. Even if they do have nut allergies, please go ahead and do the, do the patch test. I guarantee you it probably won't make a difference and won't affect them. This one helps to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Um, it's great for sensitive or sensitized and rosaceous skin, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and acne. It's ideal for hormonal acne of all skin types, low tolerance. It's good for people who have low tolerance to the AHAs. It helps to lighten and brighten. It helps to refine the outer texture of the skin and it's safe. It's completely safe for all skin types. And like I said earlier, I love it because it is uh, self-neutralizing. Our acne peel, which is a 35% salis, salicylic, is amazing. It helps to prevent and treat sebum blockage. So it helps with extraction. It helps with blackheads and comedones and helps to prevent pseudofolliculitis, which a lot of people suffer with, um, especially if you can even use this on your male clients. If any of you have male clients that are suffering from pseudofolliculitis, this is a great one to use. This is sourced, or ours is sourced from wintergreen leaves. Um, most commonly, it's the most commonly used beta hydroxy in our industry. It's effective as an anti acne ingredient. It has antibacterial and anti inflammatory properties. It unclogs the pores by liquefying that sebum and it's self neutralizing, which again is one of my favorite aspects of chemical peels. I love to use self-neutralizing uh, chemical peels because I can really control the activity of it. Um, and if I have someone who really suffers from congestion of sebum and has issues with blackheads, it really does help me do that extraction. Uh, 
Um, you can also use this on your body treatments. So if you're doing like back, back facials, um, working on the chest or decollete areas, anywhere anyone is experiencing those breakouts, shoulders, um, but they do, or we do recommend to not exceed 20% treatment area of the body. So you're not going to do like a full body treatment with this stuff. It's really great for grades one to three acne. Again, it's self-neutralizing, which is amazing. We usual, usually recommend you use this on Fitzpatrick one to three. If you need to use it on five and six, I would have your clients come in for some prep treatments, maybe using Mandelic for the first two of the series and then moving on to a salicylic just because it is more aggressive and is not as easily tolerated by darker Fitzpatrick. And again, you want to be doing the patch test with your uh, allergies to aspirin. Jesner, another one of my favorites because it has both lactic salicylic in it, a combination of both. Um, this peel is used to resurface the skin by penetrating layers, causing necrosis and sloughing. This peel is definitely a peel that your clients will see a difference with, I guarantee you. Um, I love it for Fitzpatrick's five and six, and they seem to get my clients that are Fitz, Fitz, Fitzpatrick five and six get great results with it, but I do have to ease them into it like the salicylic. Um, so it helps with melasma, hyperpigmentation, including post-inflammatory uh, hyperpigmentation, fine lines and wrinkles, acne, acne scarring, um, uneven skin tone, and texture. So this is one of my favorite acids to use, especially the one from Clear Choice because it has the 28% um, glycolic and 28%, or sorry, 28% lactic and 28% salicylic. A lot of other companies only do a combination of 14 and 14. So this one in particular is amazing. This is post Jesner. When we've done, a, you know, a probably three to five layers. I can't remember which one this was, but definitely that's the sloughing off. For this client in particular, I would have them come in seven days post-treatment if they were still peeling to help them with that so that they don't have to walk around with shedding skin. I would have them come in for like a, a, a nice exfoliating treatment to help them get rid of it if it hadn't already shed on its own. TCA, very common med spa uh, acid. And it's, this is derived from vinegar and acetic acid. It's a medium depth peel. There's definitely gonna be some downtime here. Um, depending on how many layers you do. And that's another thing with chemical peeling. Um, you can really control how aggressive the treatment is by the number of layers that we put onto the skin. This is a great anti-aging treatment. It improves the quality, the tone and texture of skin. It helps to improve the acne scarring. It helps soften fine lines and wrinkles. It prevents acne. Um, breakout, it reduces the comedone, stimulates collagen and production. But due to the risk of the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, extensive skin preparation is mandatory, typically six to eight months in advance. I would be doing my clients a disservice if I didn't prep them and prepare their skin getting moving into a TCA treatment because it is more aggressive. I want to make sure that they come in for a series of uh, their peels, making sure they're using proper home care in preparation for this treatment. Um, the TCA, because it's a medium depth peel, it can cause epidermal destruction. Um, but in our case, if it's an anti-aging treatment that we're trying to achieve, it, is re it does result in skin resurfacing. So for your clients that are at the point where they want to do something a little bit more aggressive um, and they want to have, you know, a little bit better results, but they don't want a lot of downtime, don't want to do anything that is going to cause, um, that has a lot more side effects, this is a great treatment for them. It helps to improve that hyperpigmentation and photoaging, 
It helps with fine lines and wrinkles, acne, acne scarring, uneven skin tone, um, all Fitzpatrick types with proper preparation. Then we also have our peel cocktails. We have two of them. We have our isomer peel system and our jewel peel system. I'm gonna go over those with you. So our isomer professional system um, is a unit dosage system. So when you buy your kit, you're gonna get a complete system for your client to use one treatment plus a home care treatment, uh, post-treatment healing system for them to take with them. This is designed to improve the appearance of the skin using an advanced complex blend. We have in our uh, isomer, a blend of mandelic, TCA, phytic, and lactic acids, and azuleic. It also contains kojic acid, vitamin A, alpha arbutin, and azorbic acid. So you can tell just from the ingredients alone, this is an advanced medium depth peel. Definitely gonna be some downtime here. Your client is gonna have quite a bit of frosting with this. Um, they can expect to uh, not have, I wouldn't do it before any special occasion immediately. They ha you'd have to have them come in um, probably four weeks ahead of time before any special occasion because unless they've had it done before and you know exactly how they're going to react or how long it's going to take them to heal, I would make sure that you give your client enough time to go through a desquamation process, which is usually, you know, around 28 days, a little bit longer as we get older. But I want to make sure um, they understand they will have that sunburn effect, they will have frosting, and they will get that peeling. And this is essentially what it will look like. It's safe for all skin types. Um, this system can be used to address acne breakouts, post-inflammatory marks, textured acne scarring, in addition to all of those other anti-aging and um, you know, fine lines and wrinkles. It improves elasticity because it boosts collagen production as well. It helps with texture regularities, pore size. It increases product absorption. Really, really, and truly an advanced system um, treatment, uh, your clients will love you for it. We also have another system called an alpha jewel peel. This one has a little bit of a higher pH level, so a e little easier to tolerate, but really great results. This is intended for uh, the removal of the outermost layers of dead skin with the added bonus of precious gems. Um, it's basically, um, it leaves trace elements of amino, uh, or sorry, of essential mineral acids. It creates larger. Hi, I mean, we're not sure what just happened <laughs> there. Um, looks like we lost Vicky. Let's see. I'm sure she's going to be coming back in. Uh, so let's just give her a moment. Hopefully her laptop didn't run out of, run battery. Out of battery. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and email her and see what's up. We'll be right back. So we're just trying to call her and see what's going on. So sorry about this, everyone. Just give us a couple minutes here to try and get her back and then we'll resume the class. So just give us a minute.
okay we got a hold of her she's coming back <laughs> in uh so we'll resume the hold class tight. she's just trying to uh get back in here she is Hi, Vicky. <laughs> okay. And yeah, Luann, we can um, send you the PowerPoint. Sorry about that, guys. No, no worries. worries. I am. Um, I'm going back into the PowerPoint. Um, I think what ended up happening is I think that my uh, extension thing wasn't actually plugged in. Okay. <laughs> the was, I had it I had it plugged into the I call it a power bar or whatever it's called and it didn't um uh, for some reason it closed down my PowerPoint give me one sec yeah take your time during this time does anyone have any questions yeah good idea <laughs> No questions. I'll just make sure I didn't miss any. Okay. Well, Vicky, we'll just give you a few moments. Just, yeah, here. just one sec. It's coming yeah. on. No worries. Oh, and then for anyone who is wondering, the peel that we're going to demo and the two peels you received in your kit is the 70% lactic peel. That's what we're going to demo um, today. And then you also received that 50% glycolic. Um, we sent out an email that the sample pack didn't make it in the class kit. We are sending those out today. So um, during this class, you're not going to give yourself a treatment. Just wait until you get the um, sample pack. Sample pack. Uh, we're sending it out today, second day air. So you should have it by Wednesday. And Vicki, we have a question. Um, is the Jesner hot? Yes, it is hot, definitely. Um, but in comparison to the isomer, which do you believe is hotter? Isomer is definitely hotter. And okay. I'll tell you something. Um, with the Jesner, if I kind of talk my clients through the self-neutralizing peels because we can control it so easily with um, the number of layers that we do. And I usually tell my clients, if you can take it just for a second, let me walk you through it. I give them a fan, like a hand, little handheld fan, and it does help them kind of endure the treatment. And personally, I don't even like that feeling either. Like I'm one of those people that I don't love it. Mm -hmm. So um, if you can talk them through it, because it is self-neutralizing, you will find that your clients, it'll subside. Like by the time you're finished talking about it, it will subside. Then are you deeply peeling with most of the peels she showed us? Are people peeling with the lactic? You know, it really does. Are you going to answer? Sorry, are you asking me? Yeah, that was okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so it really depends on how much you actually peel or slough off will depend on how much dead skin your client has to get rid of. I mean, if you're working on me, for example, and I take care of my skin and exfoliate, you know, all the time, I won't have a lot of sloughing. So when I do a Jesner on myself, I will see a little bit of sloughing off over the next few days, but not a whole lot. And it's usually where I get the most amount of buildup, which is around the chin area, um, certain areas of the sides of my face. But on someone who doesn't take care of their skin or doesn't go in for their regular skin treatments, they will see a lot more sloughing. And those are the ones that you might want to either send home with that post healing system kit so that they can do their enzyme and mask at home post treatment or have them come in seven days later to do, um, to do a post treatment and help them with all that dead skin. 
And then another question, is there a lot of prep needed with the isomer um, similar to that long prep time with the TCA? Yeah, so isomer, it would be definitely not an introductory uh, system to use. I would have your clients get their skin in good health and, um, you know, work up almost like a tolerance to it. Because you will find that, for example, when I sell my series of treatments um, to my clients, I have them usually come in um, for six treatments every two weeks, and that will really build up a tolerance. But even if I'm doing regular chemical peels during that series, I find that as I go, I can get more aggressive as I go too. add another layer, you know, boost or enhance it as I go that is building up a tolerance. And then finally, you know, once they've healed from that, I can go to an isomer and the isomer will have better, I'll have better results because my client will be able to endure having it on their skin and more layers of it, if that makes any sense. Does that answer? Yeah, I believe that answers it. Um, I would assume there's no peeling with the 70% lactic. It's, it's more hydrating and smoothing, um, no downtime for either. No, of them. no downtime. And then maybe some slight flaking with the glycolics. Glycolics. Yes. There will yes. be some slight flaking for sure. And definitely with the acne peel as well. Yeah. I mean, the acne peel sometimes does, sometimes doesn't because you, you might have someone that really does take care of their skin, but has a whole heck of a lot of sebum and clogged pores. So it just depends. Okay. I don't tend to have a lot with salicylic. Um, but I, you know, if I use it on someone who has a lot of blackheads and stuff, they're going to see that it's going to kind of attach itself to that. So chemical peeling, I think sometimes gives, um, I almost feel like it's the wrong name because you feel like when you say chemical peeling, you're expecting to peel. That's not always the case. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. That was, uh, that was all the questions. So we can just go ahead and get back to where we were in the PowerPoint and feel free to type in additional questions into the chat. We will get them answered for you. Excellent. Okay. So I think we left off here, right guys? We were on alpha peel. Yes. Uh -huh. Alpha jewel. Yeah. So the key ingredients in this is your, uh, glycolic lactic kojic, and it also has copper gluconate. Um, Indications for this peel is hyperpigmentation, sun damage, fine lines, wrinkles, loss of elasticity, and menopausal concerns. This is a really great option for someone that doesn't want to have or doesn't um, can't tolerate an isomer um, for whatever reason. Maybe they they have allergic reactions to something in that one, or doesn't they don't want something as aggressive. So this is a really great option for those people that can't do that specific isomer peel. And then we're going to get to our enhancers or our boosters, which is that other little box you guys got samples of. This is a really great little starter kit to introduce you to the boosters and enhancers that we have. And it really does help with um, having you figure out which ones you want to use or which ones you like best. The first one we're going to talk about is the melanin suppressant. Our melanin suppressant um, helps to decrease um, melanin production. It has antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties. It has um, it acts as a skin lightener. It addresses hyperpigmentation, melasma. It can be layered under the acids and enzymes. So if you're going to be using this melanin suppressant uh, booster or enhancer to personalize one of your treatments, you would use it under beneath before you start to do, um, to layer your, as your acid. It contains um, glycolic, lactic, malic, kojic, and berberry. And we got the, a quick question, Vicki, how many uses per uh, booster product? And the trial sizes, mm -hmm. you're going to probably get three to five uses out of each of those little bottles. Okay. And one thing actually, 
um, I would recommend is if you don't already make sure you guys get yourselves um, a syringe because once you open these bottles, you can't um, seal them back and they're very, they're highly active. So if you just take off the top blue little cap, there's a rubber base there. And if you use a syringe to extract it, to extract the product, you can um, get more uses out of it, obviously, because then it's not exposed and it won't oxidize. Just a little, and I'll tell you that from experience. So, cause when I first bought this, I was like, oh, I opened them up and I was like, how do I close them again? And I didn't realize that the little caps, I should have gotten a syringe to, to extract with. And then Vicki, how many uses with the full size booster? Um, so that's gonna depend. I think our boosters, most of them come in a one ounce bottle. Mm -hmm. So if you do, if you use probably one, uh, like a one CC per person, again, depending on how many layers you do, um, you're going to probably be able to get a good 25 treatments. Okay. And then I know we're probably going to go over this. You haven't touched on it yet, but should the boosters, um, should booster dry before applying the peel? I like to have it dry okay. before. Yeah. Let and it seep in. Okay. I know we were talking about earlier. Um, not all of them are um, applied before some of them are applied after the peel. That's correct. Okay. And we have a little cheat sheet for people, um, that you can share with them. And I'm going to go over it too. Um, coming up in a separate little sheet or a PowerPoint. It's not even a PowerPoint. It's just a PDF file, but, um, it's, it's a good little cheat sheet and it has even the Fitzpatrick's on there and how to use each enhancer and booster with each chemical, um, acid that they buy or use. And then that way uh, they can have it handy. Everyone can have it handy to refer to. And then Vicki, where do you purchase your syringes? Um, Cause I don't know where they would be able to, to get those. So I have purchased them from Amazon. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know no, <laughs> um, I do have, I do have, so Right. So sometimes in, in a pinch, I will purchase through Amazon and I'll pay that little bit extra. Uh, but most of us should have medical uh, suppliers in our areas where you can purchase directly if you open up an account and show your professional license, if you're in a licensed state. Um, and you should be able to open up an account with them and you should be able to get even like a lot of different supplies from places like that. I know I used to get my ultrasound gel, for example, for lasering and stuff like that for my medical supplier. And I'd be able to buy those little, those large, you know. It seems like you could also use, if you can't, um, in California, it's difficult to get syringes. Um, we buy from a medical company, but they require a medical license. But it looks like you could use a, um, a dispenser for medication as well you know, that you draw up, um, like for sometimes for infants, there's little dispensers, you draw the liquid up into it. I don't know. No, because the, no. the syringe is a, is a needle. So it won't, right. it'll just puncture through the rubber. If you use okay. one of those, you'd have to open it. Okay. But I wonder if a pharmacy would be able to help you with that too, like a syringe. Well, I mean, if you can find them on Amazon, obviously we're not using them for any type of injections. <laughs> so I think that would be totally fine. Yeah, like that's where I found them. But okay. I mean, and worst case scenario, you could probably, and I've been known to do this because I've accidentally opened it and and taken the cap, popped the cap off. Um, I've been known to cover it with saran wrap and an elastic band. Not the prettiest thing, but it, works okay so you can cap it and then just wrap an elastic band around it just to keep it from oxidizing and leaving it open okay easy fix yeah i mean if you know in a pinch i've done that okay all right keep on going. sure so our melanin suppressant rx contains hydroquinone which is obviously 
um, helps with melanin. It's a melanin suppressant. So this will help with hyperpigmentation. It also contains the glycolic lactic acid, azulaic, kojic, and the berberry. So the only difference between this one and this one is the 2% hydroquinone. Now, if your clients or you do not want to be using the hydroquinone, you can make your decision based on preference and the need of your client. Then we have puree, which is one of my favorites. Um, this is a very stable form of vitamin A. It helps to repair your cellular damage, promote collagen. Um, it improves skin texture, helps with cystic acne lesions. You can layer this on top. This is an, an, another example. So this one will go on top of your lactic peel. Three treatments of puree gives the equivalent of one year retinoid therapy combined with melanin suppressant. It is an effective alternative to Jesner for acne and hyperpigmentation. And it is an alternative if you're using, um, if you're working on a Fitzpatrick five and six, and you want to, you know, give somebody an aggressive treatment, but haven't built them up to it yet, you might add this booster to your um, mandelic, right? Because we, we work people up to uh, a Jesner if you're a Fitzpatrick five and six, right? So I might do a mandelic acid for my client and give them these uh, enhancers, like a puree enhancer. And this would be a, applied post acid. And actually we're trying out the 70% lactic today, guys. So maybe you wanna use the puree. That goes for Kelly and Julia. I think we were a little excited about the stem cell booster. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fine. I love the stem cell too. I love all of them. <laughs> I love all of them. I just, it's like we were talking about earlier. We just don't know which one to use. It's so exciting. Okay. <laughs> Highly stable, the Pure C is highly stable and it's potent. Um, it is gentle, it's non-drying. Um, it provides greater penetration to your keratinocytes and greater collagen production than just ascorbic acid. It helps combat sun-induced skin damage as well as improves the skin texture. This can be combined with melanin suppressant and it's an effective alternative as well to the Jesner for the Fitzpatrick's five and six. And here we go, stem cells. Um, this is a unique blend of, of plant stem cells. So this is from the stems of a lilac. It protects against UVA damage, um, MMPs activation. It inhibits inflammation, which is really nice. Um, I can't pronounce that, Bedeluja. Is that how I say it? Sherry's so much better at pronouncing this than I am. Um, so this is the skin's defense from oxidative stress. It protects from UVA damage. It's preventative. It helps, it works as a preventative to aging and photo aging. Um, this is from the jasmine plant, the gardenia, triple targeted protection of collagen systems. It restores balance of collagen turnover and type one collagen. And then finally, it contains those Swiss apple stem cells. For longevity, it delays um, the loss of a cell's power of division and growth. Essential is loss of essential cells. It increases vitality and combats chronological aging. So this is a great anti-aging and preventative treatment or booster enhancer that you can add to your, and it can be applied with a neutralizing mask of AHA acids as well, which is quite nice. Azulaic acid, I've had really great results for acne scarring and Fitzpatrick's four to six if I want to boost or enhance my Mandelic. This is used for variety, various skin concerns across all ages, often coupled with other skin enhancing treatments for maximum benefits. 
peel enhancers diminish the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, sun damage, enlarged pores, hyperpigmentation, and acne scarring. Azelaic acid is used to treat mild to moderate acne. It works in part by stopping the growth of skin bacteria that help that can help cause acne. So azelaic acid can also help to loosen acne by keeping, or lessen acne by keeping the skin pores clean. Now this is a pharmaceutical grade, high potency, 20% azelaic acid. And this again is another one of my favorites for boosting or enhancing and personalizing. We have several different peel systems that we've put in place because a lot of us um, want to get to know each and every different type of acid or chemical peel that's out there. And I think for today's purpose, we all have the system four, which contains glycolic acid and lactic acid together with your peel activator solution and your cooling mask. Um, the other systems are also really amazing and are great introductory systems that I would recommend you all try because each one of them will have something different and will help you kind of get to know the different chemical peels that are available to you um, and help you decide, you know, which ones work best for which skin and which ones work best for your clients. And in addition to that, you can combine all of these with your trial booster set. So all of these systems can be combined with um, these boosters as well. Correctives, um, we recommend 14 days prior to appeal treatment and after appeal treatment that you can or prep your skin with the anti-wrinkle retinox. It incorporates retinol palmate. It speeds cellular turnover. It stimulates healing ability of the skin. Um, our Enlighten serums are really popular. One contains hydroquinone and the other one doesn't very popular with your clients that are suffering from hyperpigmentation from sun exposure um, and extreme, you know, melanocyte activity. And they can use this leading up to uh, their chemical peel. Our Lumi Lacti C suppresses melanocyte activity without the use of hydroquinone, which some of our clients like. And then finally, our vitamin C B5 complex. This is an amazing serum. It helps to prevent hyperpigmentation and maintain healthy skin through the healing process. So this would definitely be a home care product that I would sell post-treatment series to my clients. This was the little product post-care uh, healing system that we were talking about earlier. Um, you can sell this to your client or include it, add a little bit more to your cost per treatment and include it with your, um, with your treatment for your clients to use at home. It's a surefire way for them to be using what you want them to be using after the peel that they get. Now, this post peel healing system is included with your isomer purchase of uh, a per treatment kit. If not, through the isomer, you can purchase it separately. And it contains the gentle foaming cleanser, the sport shield, which is really important in terms of sunscreen. It's a mineral, not a chemical sunscreen, which we all know is a hundred times better. Those of us that are, you know, living near beaches and stuff know that certain sunscreens that contain chemicals have been banned um, from certain beaches. I know here in the Florida Keys, I know in Hawaii, um, there's been damage to our coral reefs that have um, been proven to come from those chemical ingredients, certain chemical ingredients in sunscreens, and they have been banned from use. And if they're affecting the coral reef, you can bet they're affecting our skin. So where possible, I do recommend they use a uh, mineral or a zinc sunscreen, and I love ours. Um, also, a little uh, tip that I like is I'll take our sport shield and mix it with my own um, little bit of a foundation, and it'll kind of give me that coverage I like. And it also is uh, 
the main ingredient in it is aloe vera. And so it doubles as my daytime moisturizer. My post care protectant contains a natural humectant. It also contains the hydrocortisone to help heal my skin and help take away some of that itching feeling that I get when I'm healing. It has vitamin E and aloe vera. Um, so it helps to moisturize and protect the skin and helps to, you know, minimize the redness and irritation. And then finally, we also have in the system, the Lumi enzyme mask, which will help to, because it's an enzyme, it will help to slough off any of that dead skin that's starting to come off post-treatment. So it's a great post-care system. I really love it. Any questions about this uh, PowerPoint, guys? And I'm going to move on to the boosters and enhancers. Yeah, we had a question. Do you re recommend using the boosters like the Pure A and melanin during the summer when you're not using other peels? So I, I believe she means just using the boosters by themselves, not pairing them with other uh, Clear Choice chemical peels. Absolutely. You can, you can use it in at the cleanest point of your skin treatment. So when the skin is at its cleanest post exfoliation, post steaming and extraction, probably, um, that would be the best time. Okay. And then how soon after the peel can you use the, uh, Lumi enzyme mask? I would wait at least, um, two days, okay. two to three days, as soon as the skin is not hypersensitive. And I believe that would also depend on which peel that you give them. Um, doing oh. the lactic versus doing the Jesner, you would wait different amount of times. Absolutely. Isomer. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 100%. And then do, um, are the boosters self-neutralizing? Do you leave them, do, do you leave on the boosters? You leave the boosters on. Yes, absolutely. No, no neutralizing required. All right, I think you can pull up the uh, the cheat sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna just um, stop sharing for one quick sec mm -hmm. and find that one. Okay, actually. And while Vicki is pulling that up, feel free you guys to ask any other questions that you might have. Let me see if I can. Okay. Can you guys see that okay? Because it's a PDF file, so I can't it's kind of open in my browser. There we go. Yeah, especially if everyone puts it in full screen, it's a little bigger. Um, it, it is a little small. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. this is the way that it was downloaded. It was in a PDF and it's in my browser. It wouldn't let me, let me just see here. Yeah. And we can email. Yeah, this, this is something well. we can email direct. And then we do have another question for the AHAs. Is there a neutralizer or do you just use water? Good question. Um, we recommend our hydrating cleanser as a neutralizer. It works really well and it gets into every nook and cranny. And I'll tell you another little um, secret that I have is that no matter whether I'm using a self-neutralizing acid or not, I always have my hydrating cleanser handy because sometimes you will get someone who doesn't like the feeling of it or needs to have something neutralized immediately because they forgot to tell you that they were taking antibiotics and their skin feels like it's on fire or something like that. So please um, just whether you're using a self-neutralizing acid or not, have your hydrating cleanser or neutralizer handy just in case that comes up. 
And just a little note, I love that Clear Choice has their cleansers available um, in the huge bath bar size, bath bar. They're 32 ounce. Um, and that's obviously a cleanser that you would use quite frequent, frequently. So that might be one that you choose to get into in that huge size. Definitely a double duty cleanser. Yeah. Okay. So here's our cheat sheet. Um, and everyone is getting a copy of this as um, Kelly and Julia mentioned. This is a two page, I think it's a two page cheat sheet for enhancers and boosters. And on the sides, you're going to see each of the acids that we talked about. And on top of that, you'll see the, the enhancers. And what this does is it tells you when the application should be, um, it'll tell you uh, what the benefits are, the conditions and the Fitzpatrick's that are safe to use it on. So this is my go-to chart. And if I go down to, I was gonna use our lactic um, as an example that you guys are getting in your um, peel system, which was your, uh, it's the 70% that you're, you're gonna be using today. So let's just go down to, I wanted to just use it as an example. Compare A, we said we wanted to use the stem cells. So it's probably a four page. So the stem cell, this is the one we wanted to use today with our lactic. 70%, which is right here. So you literally just find whatever it is that you're using on the chart and you find the acid that you want to use along with the stem with the enhancer. So we're going to be using um, the 70% cryoprotect protective lactic acid peel, which needs to be neutralized, uh, needs to be neutralized because of its intensity. Um, and you guys have your uh, hydrating cleanser. The application is post-treatment. Now, a little trick is if you're using a self-neutralizing acid, sometimes you can use it, um, usually you can use your booster before. If you're using a acid that is um, needs to be neutralized, a lot of times you'll see that the booster has to be used post-treatment. So just depending, this one definitely needs to be used post-treatment. So we can put a layer of the stem cell blend on after however many layers of the lactic acid peel we use and after it's been neutralized. So this right here is a summary of the boosters and enhancers that we reviewed and when and how to use them. So it's very, I still use it to this day because sometimes I want to get a, a reminder or a refresher of when and how to use stuff. What do you think, Julia? Is that good, Kelly? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's wonderful when you all definitely it's, email that out to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like a really easy way to, um, to remind yourself. I really like to on that cheat sheet, it has the visual of the Fitzpatrick's of what you can use. It just makes it very clear cut. It is very clear cut. And let's face it, not everybody's good with Roman numerals. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what I found. I have people who are like, what? What's number five? What's a V? So at least this way you have a visual. Perfect. So in your little kits today, you guys all received your little bottles. And this is actually, um, and your peel activator solution. We didn't talk about the peel activator solution and I wanted to. This um, contains uh, witch hazel and chamomile. This is what I use immediately before I layer on any chemical acid that we have. And the, the chamomile and the witch hazel will actually also help with anti-inflammatory uh, reaction and kind of keep the skin calm or help keep the skin calm before the actual acid is applied. So it's also one of my favorite products 
I actually use it before even microneedling. Like this has got a lot of different uses. Um, anytime I'm going to do anything to the skin that is going to cause a reaction and redness, some type of inflammation, I like to put this on and use it again, something that's very versatile, great product. So in my mind, I'm kind of thinking like that would take the step um, as a toner. And a lot of cases before chemical peel, you apply your degreaser toner. So this would take that step. That's exactly right. Perfect. Okay. So should we get started on the demo? And again, you guys got the 70% lactic, the 50% glycolic, and then your little um, trial boosters. We're sending out the rest of the sample kits, which has like the aloe gel, that amazing hydrating cleanser um, today. So you'll be able to try the full treatment um, once you have everything in completion on Wednesday. This and is I'm what you guys are sending out, right? Yes. It comes, actually looks, um, well, it comes in this little bag and then yeah. it has like all of these samples. It also has the Pranus Pharmaceuticals Arnica Gel, um, which you would need, um, especially if you choose to give yourself the 50% um, glycolic rather than the 70% cryo. And if you refrigerate this, it's even nicer. And you'll find that you use this in so many treatments. It's also used in the intimate lightning treatments quite a bit. So um, it also comes in a large size. You can send your client home with the small size and then um, have the 16 ounce for your back bar. I use it post electrology. I use it post laser, mm -hmm. laser hair removal, skin mm -hmm. resurfacing, everything. Very versatile product. Very versatile. So um, if there's any questions, you can just, you can either take yourself off a mute and go ahead and ask them, or you can type them into the chat. Um, we'll go, we'll um, go ahead and get ready and start the treatment. Okay. Can so you guys you, are going to cleanse? Yes. Can you use more than one layer with the Jesner TCA Intense? Yes, you can. Um, yes. And in so fact, I do layers? recommend... Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say how many layers depends on um, the sensitivity, the Fitzpatrick and how much peeling you want. That's right. And also the, um, I do recommend that you do use it at least, at least two layers for your clients, because you want to make sure that whatever way that you're, um, I, I like to do it in opposite directions. So your first layer going in one direction, your second layer going in another direction, because you want to get in between the skin cells that are kind of cemented together. And if you go one way across the face first, you can go the other way on your second layer and oh, cross awesome. on the second, on the third, if you want, and then cross just to make sure you're getting every nook and cranny of the skin and its layers. Then are the AHAs timed? So it depends again. Yes, I do recommend that you time them because you want to make a note for yourself and your service um, on your service chart for your clients, how long you left it on for. Um, you're going to, you're probably going to leave it on for about five minutes at a time and build up from there. So once it dries, you put another layer, it dries, you put a, you know, you keep going. If you're going to do three layers, let's just say, I would leave it on after the third layer for if they can tolerate it up to five minutes, make a note of it and maybe increase and add a layer or a time or add timing the next time around. And you're speaking of the TCA intense and the Jesner here. If you were just doing one layer of um, the 35% glycolic with green tea, what would be the time that you would leave that on? Same. Now the okay. Jesner is self-neutralizing, um, isomer is self-neutralizing. So we're just layering and on those. Okay. And we're letting it neutralize. We're not removing it. Hopefully we're not having to neutralize it. Hopefully, hopefully because we've prepped leading up to a TCA or an isomer, right? We don't have to neutralize. We just let it do its thing. And then we just did our first cleanse with that gentle foaming cleanser and nice. very lightweight. It's using um, aloe vera, the soap wort, the yucca. 
So it's a really nice, gentle cleanser for that first cleanse. Excellent. And you, if you're not wearing any makeup, sometimes a double cleanse is necessary. Um, especially if you're wearing any facial makeup, sunscreen, that kind of stuff. If you're not, you know, it just depends on what your needs are. I didn't put any makeup no. on because I knew <laughs> that you can, you can lead right into your enzyme. Okay. Okay. So and I we, think mm -hmm. we're going to move forward into the pumpkin enzyme complex. Yes. Um, although we're just going to let it set. We are not going to scrub it into the skin since we'll be doing a peel. That's right. Excellent. I can just apply it like a mask. Okay. We're excited. This is our first time giving ourselves this specific treatment. Oh. Excellent. Don't do it, Frank. We have a puppy here and there's dogs barking at <laughs> full head lifting up. He wants to go out and play. Yeah. Uh-huh. We usually do all of our classes from the office. So this is why we're we're at home today. But yeah, so he's here. Um, is there any secondary peeling with these and how long before waxing and normal skincare products can resume? Okay. So waxing, definitely we're going to make sure that we're not doing anything two weeks before and after. If you think about the normal desquamation process and the time it takes our skin to rebuild, you, you treat your skin as if you have a sunburn. So you definitely don't want to be waxing on top of a sunburn. Sorry, was that, was that okay? Yeah, that was fine. Sorry, someone was off mute. So I was trying to mute them as you were talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. So, um, as far as was, what was the rest, what peels go well with thermal TCA mask? So when you're using a thermal TCA mask, you want, I mean, if it's the first time out, so the thermal TCA mask acts almost as a treatment on its own. So because it heats up, it's not the ideal, because you feel warm, it's not the ideal mask to use post peel. Does that make sense? We don't want to be putting anything that's going to heat up. We want to calm and cool. So the thermal TCA mask is a treatment alone. Well, it's, a, it, it's not something that I would really recommend, I think, with, a, with an actual acid, because when you have your, when you get a peel done, you're face feels warm and we're trying to calm it down. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just with the enzyme. Yeah. Oh, exactly what Sam just said. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're totally enzyme. on the same page. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you guys, we leave an enzyme on pretty much for as long as it stays wet, it's active. So once it dries, you can remove it. If we were in our clinic and we, you had a buildup of dead skin, I might put you, um, I might put something a little bit thicker, you know, really depends on the needs of your clients. And we're just removing this now. Perfect. We're going at a little bit of an accelerated pace because we of are. Of course. Alive. Alive. <laughs> You guys have great skin. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we do have a plethora of products to choose from. <laughs> I hear you. I do have a little um, like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation right here. So I'm excited to get in that with the lactic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to get fresh water. Okay, great. So while you guys are getting the fresh water, um, you guys have your, there's a couple of different ways that you can apply um, your uh, lactic or your acids in general. You can either use a cotton ball or a gauze, like a two by two gauze, or you can apply it with a mask brush. It really just depends on your preference.
I'm just looking at that question. There's a question that just came in about a difference between two products, Kelly. I don't know if you saw that. I didn't read the whole thing. Random product question. What's the difference between the hydrating mask plus night therapy and the professional hydrating mask? Uh, I think they might be the same thing. I'd have to double check. You're talking about the back bar versus the retail, I think. And I think it's. That's what she's talking about. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the same thing. It might just be worded differently. I'll have to check our chart. Okay. Excellent. So enzymes off. So our next thing would be to use our peel activator. It's like your prep. And you can just use that at like a toner with a two by two or, yep, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and really just get in there and clean up. And then this does come in that larger, I believe. It's yes. A 16 ounce size. Yeah, with a pump. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because you are using this a lot more. Yeah, it's so versatile. Like I said, I use it pre several different treatments, not just chemical peeling. And you do get one, I think in every single one of these systems too. Uh -huh. So if you're trying, trying it out, the other thing too, is in a couple of the other systems, you're going to get the lactic enzyme gel, which is another amazing, um, product that I, you know, love to use literally in almost every treatment that I do. So Vicki, if you were using that 10% lactic as um, a pre-treat, would you also still use the peel activator solution? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And now we move on to uh, the lactic. Well, yes. I believe we're going to, are we going to put the, we're going to put the stem cell booster Post. on after? Or yes. After, after. After neutralizing. After you neutralize it. Right. So you have your cleansing. I want to make sure you have your, um, we have your it right cleanse here. Perfect. Handy. <laughs> okay. Got it. And how many layers of this can you do? Um, you can do up to, you know, you can do three to five layers. It just depends on how um, you feel. And I am feeling a slight tingle from this. Yeah. It's, it's more itchy, not as much hot. So, and that's a really good point. I always to ask people when they're on the table and I'm, I'm applying it, they're like, oh, I can feel it. It's burning. And I'm like, okay, well, is it burning or is it itching? You know, like you have to kind of differentiate between them. Definitely itchy. <laughs> this is the time where you like almost want to manipulate it because that touch just makes it feel a little better. Yeah. So you can, I mean, you're, you can be tapping. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'll tap or I'll also give them a little handheld fan. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I always tap, 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 tap. And I'll say, where do you feel it? And I'll help them through it. I'll walk them. I'll kind of talk them and walk them through the whole treatment. Mm -hmm. As long as they're not on, as long as it's not burning itching, ants crawling, <laughs> you know, that whole feeling is normal. And if you're ready, once it's penetrated, you can do a second layer. I'll go ahead and do a second layer. And I usually go in the opposite direction of however I did it last time. Just to kind of get in between the glued cells that we have. Oh yeah, itchy. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way. It's like, oh, but I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Not a burn. Yeah. Like out of a one to ten, a, a three, four, Perfect. not a burn, just like 
irritating. If that makes sense. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> no, this is the uh, 70% lactic peel. No, we're too much of babies to do the 50% glycolic <laughs> on a Zoom. <laughs> We also did a chemical peel in a class last week. So we chose to be more cautious. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's fine. <laughs> How's it feeling? Feels good. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like you're too irritated at all. No. And anyone who's taken a Zoom class with me, you know, I'll get extremely red easily. So the fact that I'm barely even pink. Yeah, it's very gentle. Nice. Good. Okay. Do you feel like you want to go for a third? I'll go for a third. I'm going to say for two. <laughs> She's like, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. What direction did I do? Yeah. <laughs> Frank likes it. Yeah. <laughs> Frank's happy with the fact that you're going for the third. <laughs> Cheering Someone, you on. Our neighbor's having their propane filled, so he, he he's hearing it. <laughs> and well, he should. <laughs> you need to know that there's people out there. After we don't have a peel on our face, I'll, I'll blow them up. Hey! <laughs> That's enough. Excellent. Okay. And again, with okay. that third layer, a little bit. Now it's a four. Good. Still not burning. That's like, good, though. Four is good. A little pinker. Yeah. Four is good. I like four. <laughs> so um, at this point, if once it's penetrated in, we can neutralize it. I know we're kind of on fast forward. So, you know, if you wanted to give it a minute or two, you could. If not, then. Do you emulsify the cleanser with water? No. Nope. You don't need very much either. Just, yep. Yeah. And once you need to kind of, emo- you can like just add, but I, my first application is just, yeah. And then you can add a bit of water. And what I do is I just ask my clients when they're on the table, as I'm applying it, if they feel like I didn't get somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, I always find the neutralizing process to be where you get the biggest zing from that rapid change in pH. Um, and that's, sorry if you already answered this, but can you layer different peels? No, we do not recommend layering, like to use like an acne and a mandelic or glycolic and a lactic. We do not. If our peels come pre-blended, that's fine. That's one thing. Um, but that's what the boosters and enhancers are for. Um, some of the peels don't play nice together and it's hard to control. So I would definitely not recommend it, not just with, with any brand, you know, unless the manufacturer says it's okay, I would not recommend playing around with boosters, uh, or sorry, with different acids. How's it feeling? You've neutralized? Mm -hmm. It's instantly goes down. Good. Excellent. So I pat dry kind of like what you're doing, making sure you've kind of gotten it all off. And the next step is adding your stem cells. In your case, you're going to be boosting, personalizing. You know, a lot of our clients do say personalizing because you want to make, you know, let them know that it's just for them, you Mm -hmm. know, making it to suit. Yep. And then I know you were talking the way you, I already popped off the perfect blue tom, but then this little thing just comes right right out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you usually apply these with the fan brush? Yes. Fan brush, because if you use a thicker brush, it will just get lost inside the bristles. then I'm not feeling any tingle from this. 
No, especially with the stem cells, you're not really going to feel anything. You might feel a little tightening. And you said this has the lilac stem cell in it, um, which I know is also very anti-inflammatory. The apple. Apple. Is it the Swiss, Swiss apple? apple? Yeah. Swiss apple, yeah. I love that stem cell. Yes, very, very good. Off and on with the glasses. <laughs> Can't see How's it feeling? It feels so tight. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. Like you'll feel the tightening. Feel the tightness, mm -hmm. but not tingly, um, not hot. Very. No, your skin looks good. Really good. Both of you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. So at this point, I make sure that the client is just comfortable. Make sure that the client, the the stem cells have absorbed into the tissue before I apply any sunscreen or anything like that because I want the skin to just kind of drink up. Okay. Do we apply after the cooling mask? Yes. Okay. So once, once that's kind of, at, yeah, so sorry, you can apply the cooling mask as well. And that will just kind of, if someone, you'll find they're going to need it even more post glycolic because the glycolic makes you hotter. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely the mask is something you can apply in, you know, just two to three millimeters with your fan brush and that can just stay on for a good 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. Or you can just move into your, um, would you use one of these creams and then your sun protected? One of the creams like the, well, we, we, we received the copper ice cream and we also will be receiving the reconstructive brightening cream. Yeah. So you could use one of those or you could save those um, samples as a, like, it could be something you sell as a home care okay. for nighttime. Yeah. So you were just finished with the SPF. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Post mask. Yep. And um, I wanted to just also, I know you said that you might've, uh, everybody should have, or might've received, I'm just turning to the right pages here because it has the boosters in the back of it. We also have a little pamphlet um, that looks like this, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which is the professional treatment protocol. And in it has each of the protocols for the um, chemical peels. And in the back, it has also a list of the enhancers. I know you really can't another little cheat way to have like a little cheat sheet in here. Um, but it's really handy. It also, I'm just double checking, but it also shows you like the key ingredients um, of each of the acids that are in here or in your kits, in all the different kits. Um, and again, it has post-care suggestions, what to sell for your clients at home what to sell for home care in order for you to make sure that your clients are using the products that they need to be using to take care of their skin properly post-treatment. Yes. And if anyone didn't receive that, um, I'll just, I'm just going to email that out to everyone. So you'll have yes. a copy. Yeah. So it's like a step-by-step -step mm -hmm. treatment manual. Also, um, on a side note, one of the things that I like to tell people, I know we were just working on each other too. Um, we, you can also, <clears throat> when you're working on your client and they're on the table, I also like to make sure that I do apply a little bit of either uh, petroleum jelly, like a Vaseline or the laser guard in the corner with a Q-tip corner of the nose, corner of the lips, corner of the eyes. So acid doesn't accidentally, any chemical doesn't seep into the area, which I think is really important. Making sure to tell your clients to keep their eyes closed while you're applying the agents, just to make sure that it doesn't drip accidentally. I know most of us, all of us are so careful and cautious, but you never know, they, they turn, they twitch, they, something happens on the table. So just making sure to be cautious with those types of things too. I'm just trying to think of little tidbits that I mm -hmm. talk about in, in a class. 
I don't know if anyone has any more questions. So I think the way we're going to finish this treatment once we remove the mask is then we're going to put on the Arnica gel. Um, the Arnica gel, you don't need to use. It's only there if you need it. If, if you, you need to, to cool okay. someone down, down yeah, quickly. Mm -hmm. And then can you do extractions prior to the acne peel? Um, as long as the extractions are not... I mean, if they're blackhead, like comedone extractions, no problem. And as long as you're not breaking the skin accidentally, that's fine too. I'd almost recommend see what you can get out with a skin scrubber post if you're going to steam and stuff. Just make sure the skin is not broken because once the skin is broken, if you've, if you've actually extracted not using a lancet, again, I don't know what everyone's scope of practice is. Not everyone is allowed to use lancets. And if you're not using a lancet, you might be breaking skin. So just be cautious. And then how does the peel work over whiteheads or cysts? I, I believe to with the acne peel. So the acne peel is amazing over cysts because it does have the anti-inflammatory properties. And um, over a whitehead, I, if, if you can use a lancet and you can pierce it and just get the, the pus out, it's ideal because the acne peel will clean it out because it's antibacterial. Salicylic is antibacterial, anti-inflammatory. And there was another question. Uh, are, is the isomer peel and alpha jewel still only available for doctors? This is what I was told previously. Well, I know, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Vicki, the entire clear choice line was made, um, for dermatologists and now it's become completely available to estheticians. Right. So it is available to licensed estheticians. So if you're a student or something like that, or you're not licensed, um, you won't be able to buy the Alpha Jewel or the Isomer? They're both available on our website for purchase. For and you're, licensed for, you're required to put in your license in order to be able to. Perfect. No. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I just know that that's a requirement for sure. <clears throat> So also just remember that we did set up a coupon code for you. It's just clear all in capitals and that will be good until Friday, all the way through Friday at midnight. And it's just californiaskincaresupply.com um, and that will save you 10% off wholesale on the entire Clear Choice line. And we um, have that cooling mask on and it feels, feels really, feels really nice. good. <laughs> and it has that really nice scent to it, like very um, aloe vera, very light. And it has a really nice slip to it as it well. It does. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. we have any other questions? Let's start moving. No. He's only six months. <laughs> so cute. He's so cute. I can't even take Next it. time he'll be better trained, I swear. <laughs> He's been great. Are you kidding? <laughs> he only answers when you ask, does anyone have questions? <laughs> have you noticed? <laughs> it's the only time we hear him. When are we going to the park? <laughs> uh, my skin feels great. Mm hmm Good. It looks great. Great. Thank you for everything. Love the cryolactic and gel peel, by the way. Also, the sports shield is amazing. We agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, absolutely. My favorite products. Yes. All right, everyone. So I'll go ahead and email you guys that cheat sheet, the um, professional product manual protocol booklet. Um, and anything else I find that I think will be beneficial to you. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to email either of us. It's Julia at CaliforniaSkincareSupply.com, J-U-L-L-E-A. <laughs> um, and yeah, here, should we switch on the baby? Oh yeah, let's show the baby. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and here's who's been making all uh... this. <laughs> this is me. <my. laughs> so cute. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. And um, we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you.